By 2017, over 20% 20 of global emissions will be covered by carbon pricing initiatives. Now, this may not sound like a lot, but it represents a fourfold increase over the last decade. From this trend, it's clear that the uptake of carbon pricing policies is on the rise. The European Union Emissions Trading Scheme, or the EU ETS, is the oldest greenhouse gas emissions trading scheme in the world. It was implemented in 2005 and includes 28 European Union nations, plus Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway. This ETS is one of the main methods used within the EU to achieve its emission reduction targets. The scheme's cap is set centrally by the European Commission and is planned to be reduced by 1.74% every year. The long-term goal of the scheme is to reduce emissions by 80 to 95% by 2050 in comparison with 1990 emissions levels. The scheme covers a high number of sectors, close to 20, including aviation, power generation, iron and steel, cement, petrochemicals and paper. Compliance thresholds vary between each of these sectors and capture more than 11,500 companies that are required to participate in the ETS. Approximately 45% of all greenhouse gas emissions in the EU are covered by the ETS. However, only three gases are included – carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide and perfluorocarbons. As with all cap-and-trade schemes, allowance certificates are the main compliance option for liable firms. When the EU ETS commenced in 2005, nearly 100% of EU allowances were allocated to liable companies for free, instead of through a priced auction. But since 2005, free allocation has been progressively scaled back in phases to around 90% in phase two and down to 43% in the current phase. This gradual increase in auctionable allowances was designed to support participating sectors to transition to the scheme to avoid major and sudden disruptions to the EU economy. Another compliance option in the EU ETS is Certified Emissions Reduction Units, or CERs, which are a type of carbon offset. A company can obtain CERs in two ways, either through undertaking emissions reduction projects in developing countries via the Clean Development Mechanism, or they can simply purchase CERs from the offsets market. The market price of CERs is generally less than for allowances. However, there are restrictions on the number of CERs a liable firm can use for compliance. As the first of its kind, the scheme has gone through many trials and errors. There have historically been substantial price fluctuations in the allowance market, with prices dropping significantly during the global financial crisis. The reason for the drop in prices is mainly due to the overall reduced production during the crisis, in combination with many cheap projects being implemented with the CDM, resulting in an oversupply of allowances. The low prices of allowances have led to experts questioning whether the scheme is resulting in emission reduction outcomes or not. Research has shown that, while there has been some reduction which can be attributed to the ETS, much of the emissions reduction seen in Europe has been a consequence of the global financial crisis. There is, however, potential for the scheme to have significant emission reduction impacts should the cap be further reduced. This would decrease the number of available allowances in the market and therefore increase the carbon market price. A higher carbon price will make abatement opportunities financially more viable, leading to genuine reductions in emissions over time.